Wait, what? 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 what what's that? What's that you're saying? Oh, what? There's a new movie out. You want um, you want uh, this channel to talk about it? Okay, sure, sure, why not? Uh, but only as long as you get to hear it from the gay freaking K who actually does that. Okay, all right. That's not my that that's not my jurisdiction. I'm not the movie guy. All right. I know there's this big ass movie out right now, and everyone is talking about it and whatnot, but if you want my opinion, well, too fucking bad, because that is not, uh, that is not, uh, my forte. I mean, it, it could have been a couple of times, but, but for the most part, that is Graviton's forte. So unbunch your panties, okay? Get your panties out of a bunch, okay? Both of you, both men and women, get your panties out of a bunch, alright? I, I, Graviton will do it, all right? He'll do it when he freaking does it. I, I don't know when, but yeah. I, I, he, he told me that it's gonna take him a little while because uh, this one's gonna, uh, has a particular challenge for him. And while you wait, uh, you, I, I don't know, you, you could watch this video instead. Yes, because while Graviton takes care of the movies, I take care of the TV shows. Here on the Super Blending Vlog. <laughs> oh, that sound that that one sounded like I was giving birth a little bit. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so here we go. Another week of continuing to do the Super Villain Vlogs. Yes, yes. Uh, who cares about that? other thing that was keeping me from doing it that I've already forgotten. I, I, I don't even remember why I almost stopped. Uh, I don't know, it had something to do with uh, the show Zoom. Come on in, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Well, well, the point is that you don't have to worry about that anymore because I'm continuing the show, uh, starting this week in particular with Supergirl. Yes, Supergirl, yes. And um, this is the episode, of course, that was uh, set up to have the Black Mercy, yes. Now, I know I said a bunch of other stuff, um, what that could have been called. But, you know, I'm not good with names, okay? So I was like, well, was it the Black Death? No, wait, that was a plague from Middle Age, age time. What the hell is it? Ah, uh, yes, it's the Black Mercy. The Black Mercy. Now, um, I established last episode that I thought it was weird that we're tackling Superman stuff as if it was never done by Superman before in this continuity. Continuity, and I know this is a new continuity, but it just seemed it just seemed weird to me that we were doing it that way And so I, I was afraid that this would be another one of those examples of taking a Superman thing and making it Exclusively Supergirl's thing, which I, I guess is okay, you know, it's, it spreads the love and whatnot But hey, does that mean that Superman doesn't get that love? He doesn't get that super villainy love He deserves it because he's a freaking asshole and deserves every super villain to come at him with all they got especially this one, the Black Mercy, which now that I think, but it's not—he's not—it's not really much of a villain, is it? You know, the Black Mercy isn't really a villain; it's just a device. I mean, granted, it's a natural device, um, but it's not necessarily a villain. But then again, you know, people count Audrey too as a villain, so uh, and, and they count Flowey from Undertale as a villain. So, 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 so sure, why not also count this one too? Yes, this one, this one is Flowey if 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 if. If, if Flowey was done in live action. Yes, so live action Flowey um, has the ability to uh, to uh, to uh, leech themselves off of off of uh, off of uh, the organisms and put them in a trance like state where they uh, where they live their most desired um, fantasies. Yes, uh, yes, the desired fantasies. Is this real life or is this a fantasy? Caught in a suicide squad. Yes, oh, so uh, that's what happens to Supergirl. And um, as I said before, I was afraid, wait a minute, are they going to act as if this never happened to Superman? And um, they don't, they don't acknowledge that, they, they do not acknowledge that this happened to Superman, but at the same time, they don't, they don't like make it seem like it didn't happen either. Uh, it's, it, it's not like the one last episode, because in the last episode, it was 
very clear that this was supposed to be the first ever concept of Bizarro, but it was never it was never specified this week that this is the first ever concept of a Black Mercy. So uh, we'll see about that. But anyway, yes. So um, even though the Black Mercy is not a villain, a, the, the, the Flowey Audrey Two thing, however, does it 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 does serve a villain, and that villain is um is none. Yes. Now, as I said before, I'm very disappointed with this interpretation of none, uh, considering how he's supposed to be traditionally, you know, a animalistic badass, and here he's just, uh, some guy, just, 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 just some militant guy, he's, he's basically Zod, and I know some people will say, like, wait a minute, um, isn't, isn't, uh, Supergirl's evil aunt supposed to be the show Zod? Well, apparently not, because she gets killed in this episode. Yes, um, Supergirl's, uh, uh, stepsister, uh, or foster sister, uh, freaking kills her, and, uh, b but, um, b but Martian Manhunter takes the blame for it. So, yes, say goodbye to the aunt who I never learned the name of. Oh, dear. Well, maybe if she was from the comic books, then I would have cared enough to get her name. But, yes, she is gone, which means that it's now slightly more like the comic books, because in the comic books, that character does not exist. So, yes, um, now you could say, like, well, maybe they could bring her back. And to that, I say, why the fuck should they do that, considering that bringing characters back is fucking stupid? I mean, it wasn't stupid when you did it every now and then, but it seems like CW does it every goddamn week, uh, three times a week now, that now that they have three times the amount of superhero shows, but yeah, it's... That's become way of an old thing, and you know we could use you know we could use some shows that actually keep their characters dead. I mean, I know that's such a weird, outlandish concept. I mean, who ever heard of people dying without coming back? Well, that's such an outlandish thing. I can't even imagine a world where that would happen, where someone would die and then they would not come back to life. Oh my God, that is way too weird of a concept. Uh, yes. So anyway, um, yes. So she's dead, which means. That I guess non is our discount Zed. Uh, whoop -de -doo. Yeah. I mean, at least she was more interesting than him. He's just Blandy McBlanderton. Well, yep, he's he's gonna be a big bad apparently. Um, as evident by him being the one to uh, use the Black Mercy on Kara instead of Mongo. Now that's where I draw the line. Now hold on. How dare you make you, you use that storyline involving Black Mercy without using freaking Mongo? Come on, Mongo's the one who put it on him. Mongo's known for that, and also the War Planet, but mostly that too. But hey, hey, they could still have Mongo show up, just not in this way, but it was so, so perfect, you know, damn it's non, you're, you're taking the place of a much more interesting character than you, Mongo, okay, you gotta get Mongo in there, alright, his name sounds like a delicious fruit, okay, so please get Mongo in there, alright, okay, or maybe his sister, you know, since, uh, since, you know, we got Superman's, uh, female cousin starring the show, so maybe we should get Mongo's female sibling, you know, might as well do it that way, or, or, or either one, either one, I mean, frankly, you know, Mongo and his sister pretty much are, look exactly the same, except one has boobs and a ponytail, and the other has boobs and no ponytail, so anyway, alright, so, uh, I, I, I believe that sums everything up with, um, with Supergirl, um, uh, should I bring up that the, should I bring up that the, uh, Black Mercy, uh, died? Oh, it wilted away! <laughs> it wilted! Oh, no! Oh, 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 no! Oh, why did it help to have to wilt away? Why couldn't it have destroyed New York and went on to cause the apocalypse? Like, like Audrey 2 did, um, spoiler alert. Or, why couldn't it have just turned into a goat and be happy? Like, Flowey! Nope, nope, it just wilts away, and, um, and also, Maxwell Lord continues to be a reluctant prisoner of the place. Yes, he's much like, um, he, he, he is very much like, uh, he is very much like Diggle's brother. You know, he's kept in this cage, and they have to feed him, and they have to w uh, get him out for walks. It, it, it's so adorable what they're doing to Maxwell Lord. Um, they're not doing that anymore with Diggle on Arrow, because there's someone who's taken Diggle brother's place. But I'm going to save that for uh, the next few episodes, yes. Um, th that's that's not till later. So yes, um, although then again, that 
person who takes Diggle's place, uh, or Diggle Brothers' place, um, is also no longer there. So, why am I even bringing this up? Okay, now let's move on. Now let's move on. Goodbye, flowy thing. Uh, goodbye, flowy. Uh, but at least you made, um, at least you made Supergirl feel really bad about losing all her family again. And this time with little boy Superman there. Hey, yes. Oh, oh, I was getting flashbacks of Gotham a little bit. Oh, no, it's going to turn into a Gotham show. Quick, change the channel. Change the channel. Okay, we change the channel. And the channel we change to is ABC. Yes, because it's more estrogen for the win. And, of course, that means we get to talk about uh, Agent Carter. Yes, Agent Agent uh, Carter. And we finally did it, men. We finally did it, gentlemen and women and, and transvestites and all you people out there. We finally did it. We finally got more villains besides just Whitney Frost on the show. Yay! We did it! But, but, but first, we get a reminder that we kind of already had other villains on the show kind of already but then again they weren't really they didn't really make much of an impact and, and one of them uh well at least i'm talking about this season specifically i, I know last season had ifchenko and he was badass as hell ifchenko but this season this this season, it's pretty much been almost all Whitney Frost all the time. But we, we do have some other villains, like that secret organization. Um, you know, there's that. And um, and what's uh, the secret empire? One of the members of that is the head of Rox, uh, of Roxon. Roxon! Put on a night light! Roxon! Put on a night light! Yes, yes, um, y y yes, uh, the Roxon guy is bad. Back, and he's doing some doopy doo shenanigans, um, being treated like Dory from Finding Nemo, and um, and um, and Peggy constantly erasing his mind using, I guess, a prototype of uh, of, of the neuralizer. It's like a neuralizer prototype. Um, except it's a lot smaller and more convenient than the one that was in the Men in Black 1960s movie. But anyway, um, uh, yes, uh, the, the movie that went back to the 1960s, I, I, I mean, I mean. So, uh, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, she does that a bunch of times to him, probably rendering him, uh, completely, uh, completely disabled, probably, he's probably got a lot of mental deficiencies now, but that's okay, that, 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 that's okay, it's, it's, it's the Roxanne guy, he's not much of a villain in the comic books, he just, like, wears a snake hat once, and then we hardly ever see him again and i don't know much about him all right but the point is is that um the, the, the point is is that peggy erases his mind enough for him to assume that he had a blowjob even though he probably didn't well that is stone cold making someone think they got a blowjob even though they did not Ooh, oh that's that's stone cold right there. All right, so, um, yes. Uh, so, uh, now that we move on from that, let's talk about the actual uh, ultimate villain that we actually get introduced into this episode. That is much more of a villain than the Roxxon guy, and that is Manfredi. Yes, they finally got the... They finally got the magia into up in this. Yes, finally, I've been asking for this for so long. And they finally did it, and it's led by Manfredi. Now, he apparently, he's not going to take on his Blackwing persona. I, I, I don't expect him to, because, you know, this universe isn't supposed to get back into all that uh, costumed mumbo-jumbo until Iron Man shows up, you know. And that's not till like, freaking four or five decades from... Uh, no, no, wait, seven. Seven decades! Or, well, what did Nick Fury say? N nearly 70 years. Y yeah, I think it's like that. So we still got a while before um, before Manfredi ever decides to do that. And um, so he probably will not become Blackwing, which is fine. You know, we got plenty of people who dress up as birds later on, you know? So, um... So, the reason why they have him here is because in the comic books, he has a lot to do with the Magia. You know, he's the son of Silvermane in the comic books. Yes! Does that mean we'll get Silvermane on the show now? 
I'm not completely sure about that because um, I mean, I, I, I don't know too much about I, I, I don't think so because Silvermane is something I think would be done better in in, um, in modern times you know uh, Silvermane so and, 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 and Silvermane is an old guy in, in the comic book so what they could do is do the switcheroo since you know this is the 1940s so what they could do is um, they, they could do is have is have a um, Manfredi um, you know they, 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 they could have Blackwing, as he's called in the comic books, be the father of Silvermane instead. Yes, do the switcheroo so that by the time we get so, so they so so maybe that he could have like he could have like uh, Silvermane as a baby on the show, and then by the time we get to the present, Silvermane will be the age he usually is depicted in in the comic books, an old freaking old man. Yes, yes, it's perfect. He'll be an old man then. Yes. That's what I kind of suspect. Maybe they could do with um, they, they, they could do with uh, I I expect that possibly they could do that with may, may, maybe do that with Count Nefaria also since you know we got uh, we got Whitney Frost here too. Like maybe do the switcheroo with them too on that. But I imagine that um that Whitney Frost's husband is not gonna make this season. He's not gonna make it uh this season. And he tried to run away from her. He tried. He's like, hey, it's not you. It's me. Actually, it is you. It, it's the fact that you have freaking superpowers, and I'm scared for my goddamn life that I'm gonna end up like those mice and that one square brother. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> oh god. Uh, yes. So um, so I guess that means I'm talking about Whitney Frost again now. Oh, but that's okay that I have get to talk about her again because you know at least we got her along with someone else, Manfredi. Finally, all with all of his. Punching glory, beating the shit out of that one henchman. The reason why I bring that up is because apparently everyone wants to bring that up. They, they're emphasizing uh, more on the fact that he did that than the fact that he's freaking Blackwing from the comic books. Okay, I, I I know that that's not really something notable, but the fact that he's the son of Silvermane should be, you know, he's the son of a cyborg. That's why I think that he, they, they should instead make him be the father of a cyborg so that we can have the cyborg in the present. But then again, it would be cool to have have like a, a, a 1940s cyborg, you know, like, that could be awesome, but then again, uh, who, who, who the hell knows, so anyway, so yes, so, um, so, so, uh, Whitney Frost's big old plan in this episode is to gain more power, yes, yes, she's embracing her super-powered nature now, and she needs more, she needs to be fed, feed me, feed me more, Yes, she needs to be fed, and, and, and she feeds off the dark energy of that frozen lady. Here I am, and what can do for you? Let the room lead on. Uh, yes. Um, anyway, um, yes, so she feeds the energy off of that, but, off of the frozen lady, but she realizes, no, that I need more, I need more, and the only thing I'll get that from is an atomic bomb, yes, she, so she goes to a warehouse, but it just so happens that Peggy is having a night out with, um, with the friends, you know, they're having friends, um, they're having a friend's night out, trying to, um, to, trying to defeat her plans, trying to overthrow her plans and whatnot, and so, uh, and, and so, uh, and, and so, uh, F uh, Whitney Frost's answer, uh, to this against Peggy is to, um, is to push her down a, da down onto a bunch of bricks and spikes. Yes, that's her uh, answer to that, is to do that. And, and, and right as she's about to do that, uh, uh Peggy Carter's hanging she's dangling for her life, and then, and then, um, and, 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 and then I think, um, and, and, and then I think Whitney Frost says something about, oh, yeah, some people can't handle Hollywood, and then she, uh, and, 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 and then she makes Peggy slip off of the bar so Peggy can get injured, and to that I say, well, now, hold on, that was a missed opportunity, Whitney Frost, instead of saying that, instead of saying this BS about Hollywood, you could have said, long live the king. No! Oh, whatever. All right. Okay, now let's move on from Peggy Carter to the flesh. Yes, moving on to the flesh. Ah, uh, yes. And this is where we finally... God damn it, we shouldn't have taken this long. We finally have an episode where we explore uh, Earth 2. Yes, we have finally have an episode where we actually get a whole... We actually get to see the characters explore that world. 
world, explore the other dimension. It is Earth too. Well, finally, it took you God, so long. I mean, we're almost halfway done with the goddamn season, and you only go to Earth too now. Yes, but we finally did it. We finally got to that Earth. And as um impl and, and and as signaled by uh, the first episode of the season, um, Earth Two apparently um did not um change um from how it was in the nineteen twenties. Apparently, it's still like that, or or maybe like twenties or thirties, you know, or forties. I don't. It kind of all meshes together in my head. But but but, but yes, before you get all mad at me, no, yes, I do know the differences. All right, yes, um, twenties was that time where everyone was all happy happy and there was all a great time and 30s was the time where it got all sad and everyone was poor and it was all shit and then 40s was that time where like hey we just had a world war and now we're getting back in business we're doing better stuff now now that we had that war yes hey, we're gonna slap ourselves into shape and and then 50s was the time we're like hey let's make a bunch of shitty movies all right so anyway um and then 60s was the time where we where they said, okay, now let's just get freaking high. Let's just get all high. Okay. And then 70s was the time, like, hey, let's have a duck sing disco. Okay. And then 80s, I don't know why I keep going. I don't, in, in, anyway, um, uh, 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 right. Um, I, I, uh, I had like a VH1 moment right there. Um, so, so, so anyway, yes. So uh, that's what the, uh, that's what Earth 2 is like. It's, 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 it, it, apparently it did not evolve from that culture uh, many decades ago. You know, it's, it's like watching the episode. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought I was done watching Agent Carter. Apparently I still am. Well, well this is a crossover I never expected to happen. <laughs> but anyway, yes. But it makes sense that um, they would do it that way because apparently they did not want um, uh, Jade Garrick to be from the past like he's traditionally supposed to be. You know, that's why he dresses up like that is because Jade Garrick is from the past. So instead of making him from the past, they instead make him from an alternate dimension where it's still the past, or at least culturally the past, because their technology is like kind of advanced and stuff, except they still have, like, the old type of phones, except they have, like, switches and stuff, um, but yeah, but anyway, so yes, um, now what's very interesting about this episode is it brings up the themes that, you know, you might have some worlds out there where you got your villains that are all established and and whatnot, and you got, you, you, you got these, um, concrete ideas of who's the villain and who's not, but but you're forgetting is that there are many worlds out there, many possibilities that are that th th that actually happen in other worlds. And so you might be a villain in one world, but in another world you are not a villain. And that's it, and that goes the same for vice versa. Yes, this opens up a whole. This opens up so many possibilities now. Oh my God, I never thought of this. There might be worlds out there where. I'm not a villain. Oh, oh my god, that is such a haunting concept, yes. Uh, but there might be worlds out there where the Flash and Arrow are villains, yes. Although some could argue that in that, that in Earth-1, um, Arrow already is a villain, but you know, that just depends on who you are and what your political views are, but yes, but yes, so, so that's such an interesting concept. You might be a villain in this world, but in another one, you might not be. And that same goes for people who aren't villains in this world, because in another one, you might be, yes. And, of course, this goes double for, um, for, uh, for, for, uh, for Killer Frost, yes, Whitney Snow, yes. Of course, ever since it was confirmed that the character's name was Whitney Snow, that meant it was, wait a minute, did I say Whitney Snow? Sorry, I'm still thinking about Whitney Frost, you know, Frost Snow, <laughs> but, but I mean, uh, Catelyn Snow, Caitlin Snow, yes. Um, Caitlyn Snow. Ever since we knew her name was Caitlyn Snow, that means she's destined to become the um, Killer Frost. But instead, it seems more likely that, no, maybe she'll never become Killer Frost, and instead, we'll just have her alternate self from, uh, from Earth 2 be this universe's Killer Frost instead. Or, or be the other universe's Killer Frost instead. Oh, my mind is exploding! But at least in another dimension, it has not exploded, yes! So after all this waiting of two seasons, well, more like a season and a half, honestly, but yes, after all this waiting, I finally get to see her be Killer Frost, accepting her destiny. 
Oh, wait a minute, I don't, because she's already Killer Frost in another world. Does this mean that this universe of Scatlin Snow will never be Killer Frost, and instead of just this universe? Well, if that's the case, then they better milk this for all it's worth. I want to see her as much as possible as Killer Frost, this other universe Killer Frost, okay? That better be utilized as much as possible. The fact that she's got ice powers and she's got the white hair. She she has uh, established herself as the Killer Frost that we've all been waiting for. Uh, and I guess that means we'll never see the other universe's Catelyn Snow be Killer Frost. But whatever. Let's just... In fact, I wouldn't even... You, you know what? Since she's so much more interesting in this other universe, why not just have her replace the other Catelyn Snow? You know, just have her come here and and replace the other Catelyn Snow. That's fine with me. I mean, she seems more fun and more and more of a... Has, has more of a personality than that one. But yes... Uh, but alas, they don't really emphasize on her that much in this episode as they do for her boss. And you might be thinking like, oh, I I guess her boss is Zoom, you know, like she's one of Zoom's uh, henchmen. Nope, she actually works for someone who works for Zoom, needlessly making this more complicated than it needs to be. And who is that? Oh, it's Vibe. Yep, it's Earth 2 Reverb. It's Earth 2 Vibe called Reverb. Apparently, the reason why he's called Reverb is because in the comic books, um, Vibe's brother is Reverb, but instead of uh, Vibe's brother being reverb in this show. Instead, uh, Vibe's brother is a asshole. So instead, um, Earth 2 Vibe is reverb. That's freaking stupid. I mean, uh, the Vibe was never a villain in the comic books. Why do they have to hype him as a bigger bad than, than Killer Frost? Killer Frost is actually known for being a villain. She's actually known for being a villain. Even, hell, even one of the ladies from the from, from the talk knows that she's a villain. She was like, ah, a classic comic book character, a, a Killer Frost. She's finally going to become Killer Frost. Yes, even she knows that, the, the, that, that, that Killer Frost is a well-known comic book villain, or at least well enough know, known for the talk to know about her. Come on now! Why are you emphasizing more on Vibe being the evil villain when he's not in the comic books? You're just doing that because you don't know what the fuck else to do with that character. Is, isn't that right? You're just doing that because you don't know what the hell else to do with him. <sighs> I mean, when they first show him, at first it seems like they're intentionally making you think that that's Earth 2 um, uh, Captain Cold. Like, that's Earth 2 Captain Cold. It's like, yay! He gets to be on this show despite being somewhere else currently. Woohoo! Uh, but nope, it's it's reverb. It's 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 evil ver vibe. But, but you know what? That's okay. That's okay with me. And you know why I don't mind this too much? Because he dies! Yes! He's dead! Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah, 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 and that means that Killer Frost gets to be the one to um show off her true villainy in the next episode. Yes, she got, she has it all to herself. Well, and also um Zoom too, but but sadly not not Deathstorm. Yes, Deathstorm was in this episode, and he died. Well, that was kind of a waste. I mean, I didn't mind Deathstorm being here because he's got, like, an evil counterpart in the, um... Because Deathstorm is the evil counterpart of Firestorm in the comic book, so I was fine with his inclusion here. But nope, Zoom was like, nope, if I get rid of... Uh, if, if I have to get rid of, um, uh, evil vibe, then I have to also get rid of evil Firestorm too. You gotta pay the troll toll to get through the poison hole. So that's what, that's what, um, th th that's what Zoom had to do, okay? Uh, it's really sad, but that's how it had to work out. But what I'm concerned about is that this is the chance for um, Killer Frost to be to, to um, show her true, to be 100% all-out villainous. But I think what's going on here is this might be the chance for her to become heroic a little bit. And I don't want that. I don't want that. No, no, we've waited too long for this. Don't, 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 don't do this to us. Don't turn on us right now. No, not after we waited so long. Oh, God. Also, um, Gromancer is in Earth-1, and, um, uh, Jay Garrick has to go up against that guy. Ugh, man, they really, they really put a lot of time and effort onto Gromancer's costume, even though he's a villain who doesn't really deserve all that much attention. Like, oh, great, it's a Earthquake guy, let's... Let's get him in on the show. Let's give him some of the best costumes we've ever given any character, even though 
do we really need to give that much of a fuck about Gromancer? I don't think so, but, uh, but alas, we're gonna have to deal with him next time too, I guess. Oh well. But just as long as they don't go ahead and make uh, Killer Frost already uh, super heroic. No! No, okay? We waited too long for this, okay? Alright, okay. Also, there's some guy with a helmet that covers his face and he's like, knock, knock, knock. And I I is he a villain or is he a hero? I don't... Your guess is as good as mine as to who that is. All right, let's move on now. Let's let's keep on going on this train, and the next stop is Arrow. Maybe we should keep on going on this train. Uh, now nah, let's stop on Arrow, but just for a little bit. It's just, it's just a quick pick stop, okay? Oh, oh shit, maybe this won't be that quick, because there's a lot to talk about in this one, yes? Because um, even though I won't talk about all the villainy on this week's episode of Arrow, because, um, because we have a personal vlog dedicated to a particular villain of this episode, so we don't have to take care of, so we don't have to worry about that, there's still other things to discuss. And that, and the big thing to talk about is what goes down between um between Malcolm Merlin and uh, Nisa Al Ghul. Yes, because Malcolm Merlin and Nisa Al Ghul are having a bit of a feud. Did I say a bit of a feud? I mean a big ass feud. Yes. And apparently they kept uh, forgetting to do this several times. Like they both procrastinated on the feud and they're like, hey, shouldn't we be feuding right now? And they're like, no, um, we're not going to do it until the writers want us to do it. So let's wait till mid-February. All right, let's do it. Yes, even though we started this feud in like in like October, early October, let's wait until now to actually start the feud, to, to continue it, because the writers uh, think that this is the perfect episode to do it. Okay, now let's do it. Now we're fighting. We're we have our arrows out, and we're and and and, 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 we're, and we're fighting, and we're and we're, and we're and we're killing innocent people, and we're doing it um surprisingly uh, at a lot small scale than you would think. A lot of a smaller scale than you would think. Well, I you would think the League of Assassins would have a bit more people than there actually is, but no, it's. It's really small as fuck. Yes, and um, and and Malcolm Merlin is so tied up with um defeating Nisa Al Ghul because Nisa Al Ghul is trying to dethrone him with his reign as Ra's Al Ghul. By the way, uh, since when was Ra's Al Ghul really that much of a title like Caesar? I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I know it's like that in Batman Begins, but that's stupid. I I prefer to have one. I, I prefer to have one concrete. Um, Razo Ghul. Don't make him like the Joker in Gotham, where he's more of a concept than a, uh, he's more of an idea than he is a, uh, character. That's stupid, okay? J -j just make him a character. But, yeah, but alas, the whole reason for this fight is for, is to get the, is to get the, um, is to get the title of Raz al Ghul, and, and, um, and Arrow is tied on of it because, uh, because he's trying to get the, he's trying to get the, um, he's trying to get the cure for his, uh, for his sister, Thea, and since, um, and since, uh, Malcolm Merlin is the father of Thea, that means he has to cooperate with, um, he has to cooperate with, uh, Nisa to get the, uh, to get the, uh, serum to cure her. But luckily, uh, Malcolm Merlin don't give no fuck. No, he, he, he cares more about the, about the title of being Ra's al Ghul than he does for, um, his own daughter! Yay! That's super villainous! Although, maybe that's not as villainous as it is being an asshole. I mean, fuck, if I had a daughter, I'd ca I, I, I would care about whether or not she dies, you friggin' dumbass asshole. My god, you, you, you... There's being a villain, and then there's being a bad parent. And you're being a... And you're just being a bad parent, Merlin. You don't deserve the title of Ra's al Ghul, which means you're going to have to fight for it against Oliver Queen instead of Nisa al Ghul, because, you know, Oliver Queen is like, no, 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 only I can do the, um, only I can do the climactic battles of episodes. That's me. That's all mine. I want to do it. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so, so Oliver Queen is the one to fight Malcolm Merlin, and he cuts off his hand. Yes, that's why the picture that I'm using for this this is a hand. Yes, he cuts off his hand. Wait a minute, Malcolm Merlin isn't Roy. Wait, why the fuck would you do that? Um, is, m maybe this is gonna cause Malcolm Merlin to do this to Roy out of revenge. Like, oh, your uh, your friend cut off my hand. Now I cut off your hand. Oh, 
um, maybe that'll could, could maybe that'll be a contrivance or something. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, yes. So um, so yes. So uh, so Mac and Merlin only has one hand now. No! Oh no! Oh, masturbating will be never be the same. I know, I know that was too obvious of a thing to do, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm known for being low brow. Fuck it, I did it. I, I, I made a masturbation joke. Sue me, sue me. Put me in jail. Put the handcuffs on me. Yeah. So anyway, so yes. So now that Mike Malcolm Merlin has one hand, that means he cannot wear that ring anymore. So he must give it over to Oliver Queen, and so Oliver Queen has the ability to be Raz Al Ghul again, and he gives it over to Nisa. Jesus Christ, Oliver. You really love helping sewer villains. No wonder I mentioned earlier in this episode you're co- sort of already like a villain, huh? Eh? Eh? I'm beginning to no longer regret having you in the show that one time. Yes, I have. I actually had him on the show one time. I'm, I'm, I'm as this uh, in utter disbelief still as you guys are about that. But yes, so she gives it to to, to uh, Nisa, and Nisa's like, you know what? Fuck this. No one's Raz Al Ghul, okay? You, the only way you're gonna get Raz Al Ghul now is from a Legends of Tomorrow later in the season. So screw you guys, I'm a going home. So yes, yeah, so she burns the um, ring, and um, and um, and uh, and Malcolm Merlin is all like, "No, me wants the ring. Me wants it. Me wants the ring." Uh, yes. And so, what does Malcolm Merlin do to do to um uh, have to exact revenge on Oliver? Well, he teams up with oh this asshole again. <sighs> He teams up with Damien Dark. Oh, fuck. Yeah, he teams up with that guy. And he's like, hey, I'm going to team up with you. Just like how every other goddamn person under the sun apparently likes to team up with Damien Dark. Jesus Christ, it seems like everyone wants to team up with Damien Dark. Before you know it, um, we're going to have Ambush Bug team up with Damien Dark. Jesus, oh my god. So yeah, he teams up with Damien Dark and says, "Hey, hey, Damien Dark. Um, Oliver's son has a uh, a, a illegitimate child. There, take that for what you what you will." And um, and Damien Dark is like, "Say what?" So yes, so yes, so apparently yes. Um, our uh, worst dreams are coming true. Uh, the, the, the 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 tombstone might be Oliver Queen's son. Oh no. That's freaking stupid as all fuck. I mean, if you're gonna keep if you're gonna keep hyping up that there's gonna be this death at the end of the season, why not actually have it be a um, a, a a regular character on the show? Because that way, it's such a horrible blow to the show itself that a death like that uh, proportionate would happen. You know that that we would have to say goodbye to one of the characters. That's worth hyping up. Not hyping up that one of the characters that we barely see on the show is gonna die. I mean, I know I I, I know that um. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that that um, I, I, I know that uh, that Oliver's son has been uh, has been established ever since uh, season two of Arrow. But still, it's still stupid as a fuck. Okay, all right. That's that's basically. It's almost like what Clone High did as a joke, where they purposely brought on a character onto the show uh, that that one episode to make him seem like he's a uh, t- to make it seem like he's this um, important character just to kill him off. They did that as a joke, and that's basically what this show is doing it. This, that's basically what this show is doing. Just like that. It's like, hey, we're gonna kill someone off, and it's a character you barely ever interact with. Whoopsie doo. <sighs> Alright, let's recover from Arrow, and, and the medicine we're gonna use is Illusions of Tomorrow! Yes! Yes! And um, much like The Flash, Legends also has a concept, a high concept, that they also try to utilize, or at least pretend that they utilize, and barely do anything with that. With Flash, it's um, interdimensional travel, and with Legends of Tomorrow, it's friggin' time travel! Even though that's the whole premise of the show, is time travel, um, they don't really time travel that much for a show that's all about time travel. Yes, it took them three episodes to get out of the 1970s. Three! Three episodes they stayed in the 1970s. Three! And and so in this episode, they finally, finally go to another time period. Oh, thank God. 
Oh, thank God almighty, they finally did it. They finally went to another time period. And that time period is the 1980s. Oh, well, that's... Uh, well, you traveled really far. You, you traveled a decade. Just, just a decade. Just one decade. Oh, well, at least it's different, I guess. A decade. I mean, as long as it's not the 1970s. It's, I, I, I guess time travel is time travel. At least they went somewhere besides the 1970s. It just would have been nice if it was more than a decade. But yes. But, um... But the reason for that little of a time difference, apparently, is because they set up something in the previous episode uh, with the 70s that is paid off here in the 80s. Yes, because apparently, one of the organizations at the auction that came across uh, The Legend of Tomorrow uh, witnessed a firestorm and was like, holy shit, we need to make our own firestorm. And it took them a long ass time, but they finally did it in the 80s. They, they are coming very, very close to making their own firestorm. And so that's the whole villain plot of this episode. The villain plot being that they're trying to make their own firestorms all over the goddamn place. Oh, but they keep failing over and over again, you know, failure after failure after failure. And one of the people working on this project is this um, Russian scientist lady. Now, at first you think, oh, oh, this is just a chance to, um, for Captain Cold to show off his moves, to show that he's a ladies' man, apparently. Like, hey, hey, how's it going? And it's supposed to be funny, like, oh, oh, look, isn't it ironic that she is, um, that, that she, um, uh, finds Captain Cold more engaging than the Atom. Isn't that ironic because Captain Cold is a villain while, um, w while meantime, um, uh, uh, the Atom is a goody two shoe superhero? Isn't that so ironic? Well, apparently, um, uh, there's a reason for that. And that's, and that's why it's so fun to see this on hindsight. Because now I realize, wait a minute, that might have been done on purpose. Because the reason why she found, um, Captain Cold more engaging, and it's not just because the actor is more char uh, charismatic, it's also because she herself is a villain. Yes, she is the one who's behind this project, or at least is helping with this project. Now, I shouldn't be treating this like it's a surprise because I already said that um, earlier I said that but at least it's a surprise within the episode itself so there you go and um, in the comic books this particular character this Russian scientist lady um, becomes the female version of that that uh, black spot guy from uh, that, that negative guy what, what's his name again like negative Nancy I don't know like uh, he, Mr. Negative I, I don't know just some kind of negative guy from the Doom Patrol he, he becomes that dude uh, or no no, no wait, she becomes um, a female uh, equivalent of that dude she becomes like the female doppelganger of that dude a a female um, a, a, a female version of that dude and so uh, it seems like instead they decided you know what instead of her becoming the female equivalent of that superhero Instead, let's make her the female equivalent of someone else. Because judging by next week's previews, she might become the new Firestorm, yes! She keeps getting more interesting by the moment. But wait a minute, I just realized something. They've been doing this a lot lately. They take these characters who have different powers than Firestorm, and then they make them exactly like Firestorm. They did that with Tolkamak, and now they're doing that with her. What the hell? I mean, come on, be, be a little bit more creative than that. Don't have every character be be an equivalent of another previous character. Don't have them all have the same powers. Come on, a little bit of diversity would be nice. You know, not just in the races, which I think is perfectly fine with this show because you know we got you got your Latino and you got your black guy. I, I apparently that's enough, I guess. But 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 not only that, um, but, but but we need to be diverse on the powers too. Okay, we got two fire guys on the show: Firestorm and Heat. Wave. Speaking of Heat Wave, um, Heat Wave uh, does a little bit of eavesdropping on this episode. Yes, he's eavesdropping on some other sources of villainy in this episode. Yes, not only is there the evil firestorms going on, which is funny since we just had an evil firestorm in the flesh, but yes, there's other stuff going on in this episode too. Because at first, we think, oh no, 
we just dealt with a horrible loss. Oh, God. Oh, no. Kronos is dead. Kronos has passed away. Oh, God, it's so tragic. I loved him. I never said how much I loved him. I never said how much I loved Kronos. No, not Kronos. Well, guess what? He's alive! Yay! Oh, oh, don't do that again. Don't no. Don't you ever give me a heart attack like that. Don't scare me like that, show. Oh, man. Oh, thank God he's still alive. And not only that, but he's in cahoots with one of the Time Masters. Yes, I'm still calling them Time Masters. Oh, wait, they're called Time Masters. Sorry, I mean Time Lords, because this is like Doctor Who... Um, but apparently Time Masters is actually what they call themselves, and at first I thought, no, it's not Time Masters, that's way too similar to Time Lords. But as I said before, yeah, they, they're like, you know what, fuck it, we're, we're, we're gonna be like Doctor Who on purpose. Screw you guys! Okay, so anyway, so yes, and much like the Time Lords, these guys are also potential assholes, because they, um, because at first they try to uh, be reasonable with, um, with, uh, with Rip Hunter. They're like, okay, um, could you guys please come back with us? Could you please do that? Uh, could you please bring these people back to their regular timeline and then uh, turn yourself in? And then Rip Hunter's like, I'll think about it. And then the Time Master's like, screw you! I'm a super villain! You should have known that because I was also one of the villains of the Ant-Man movie. Yeah! I was not Yellow Jacket. I was the other guy that you probably already forgot. But yeah, I'm a villain! And I still have Kronos by my side. Kronos is my bodyguard. You got my back, Kronos. Now, now beat the shit out of these guys. So Kronos does his thing, and he injures Firestorm, and that would, and, and that's what gets Firestorm to do a random story arc. And then, but but alas, they do not. But even though that is such an awesome twist, a turnaround for those characters, thus causing more potential supervillains to happily bud, or at least not necessarily. Not necessarily supervillains, but more like um, misunderstandings, like uh, arguments and scuffles and stuff. But you know what? It's more interesting than the ones that are usually on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so I'm fine with that. But no, the they're not the ones who cause the cliffhanger in this episode. Instead, the cliffhanger is that half the team has been kidnapped by the Ruskies. Oh, no! Oh, oh! Where's Rocky when you need him? Rocky needs to come here and avenge Apollo Creed in order to settle this thing. But alas, Rocky is not here. He's too busy accepting his Oscar instead of a black guy. So, so that means that we're going to have to have another time period that has multiple episodes dedicated to it. God damn it! Uh, I mean, it's cool that we're having a cliffhanger, but that means it. That, but that means we have to spend even more time in the 1980s. Mm. Mm. Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, the Atom, uh, half of Firestorm, and uh, Heatwave are kidnapped by the Ruskies. <sighs> so yeah, we're gonna have to stay in the 1980s. Whatever. But at least we'll get a female Firestorm next episode. But that better be it, okay? No more villains having all the same powers, okay? Mix it up a bit, alright? Mix it up. Alright, so, um, that pretty much sums up, uh, this week's episode, um, this week's, uh, villain vlogs, coverage of Super TV Villainy, so I'll see you guys, um, in the following week, yes, where I talk about more stuff regarding villainy, and if you want me to talk about a particular thing that happened this week, just make sure you get that from Graviton instead, yes, um, yes, Oh, but it might break, Graviton. I'm a little bit concerned. Hang in there, Graviton! Be like that cat that's probably dead. Oh, and happy late Valentine's Day! Yay, it's not Valentine's Day anymore! Fuck it! <laughs>